What is up, Dream Media family? This is Zach. If you guys aren't a subscriber already, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below and give me a big thumbs up on this video. Today, we are on episode number three of my pool table transformation into a home theater. Got rid of the pool table, got some couches, big beanbag chairs, and a bunch of AV goodies that I'm gonna put into this space. But today's video is going to be on wiring. You guys know that this equipment doesn't just fall into place. <laughs> you gotta run wires for any high-end system. So today we're gonna be running a little bit of speaker wire as well as coaxial and cat cable. So right here, I got 500 feet of 14-2 shielded oxygen-free speaker wire, in-wall rated, um, two conductor, and I'm gonna be running that to all the speaker locations. I'm gonna be running a 7.4.6 and also I'm gonna run one extra wire for the voice of God in case I wanna go RO3D down the road. Um, we got our RG6 right here. This is another 500 feet, probably won't use all of this, but RG6 is great for pre-wiring. It's essentially coaxial cable, you know, that you use for like cable box or satellite dishes, but you can tip it with a RCA cable, which I'm gonna get into the details of exactly how to make fittings and how to run wires. I'm gonna show you how to use fish rods some specialty tools that I have here in my bag, finding studs, drilling through studs. It's gonna be a very long format video that is extremely informative, and I hope you guys enjoy this content. I've been making a little bit more um, informative, long format videos here recently to help you guys out for my customers out there that do wanna DIY it. We ship throughout the entire nation and carry all the industry leading manufacturers, guys. So reach out to my specialist. We offer free design and consultation service where we'll FaceTime with you, look at your space, even if it's not an ideal theater room like this space here. Our specialists work on these projects every single day to optimize your experience and find a package that fits your needs and budget. Well, enough talking. Let's get into this install, guys. Got the ladder up, got the tools and the wire. It's time to start making a mess. guys i got all the furniture out of here for you guys who didn't see the first episode we're working with a 17 by 17 foot space excluding the bar area as well as the bedroom doors and everything over there we're 12 foot from the floor to the crease this front wall and we're 15 feet to the peak of the room these are vaulted ceilings the whole wall width is 118 inches wide. I'm gonna be doing an Epson LS800 4K 4000 lumen ultra short throw projector up here in a Salamander Designs AV cabinet broadcasting onto the uh, Epson 120 inch ALR screen. Focal 302s to the front left, right and center. And then SVS. SB 2000s to the left and the right in the front and then here at the rear of the room I'm going to have the SVS PB 16 ultras in the rear two of them and then the 300 series Focal that have the matching flax woofers and the titanium aluminum inverted dome tweeters the in wall six to the surround left and right I can't really do surrounds so it's going to be a five channel system because I could put one there, even though it'd be a little far back, but I really can't put one here. I'm gonna go ahead and run additional lines just in case down the road as my kiddo gets older, I can put the seven channels, the surrounds on stands, but for now, we're not gonna do that. As far as overhead effects, I got plates up here for distributed audio. I'm gonna relocate the wiring back here to the front of the room. And I'm gonna pop two speakers in there, the Focal, the 300 ICW6, and then we're gonna be using the new 300 series, the 300 ICA6 for our fronts because they're aimable. That way we can directionally point the audio. These are actually sitting on a slight slant and directionally it looks like they're gonna be firing pretty accurately towards my target seating area. Whereas these ones here, 
are gonna need a little bit of help. So I'm gonna use those 35 degree angle to directionally point them. So we're gonna do a total of six and I'm gonna line it right up with the primary seating area, which is gonna be right here. We're gonna do right there, front uh, height one and two, or front at most, uh, left and right, and then mid at most, left and right, and then overhead, rear at most, left and right. Now, if I end up checking the projections or I'm not satisfied with the performance, I can always pop these guys out and put the aimable ones in. And I'm also gonna run an additional speaker wire up here into the ceiling in case I wanna do a voice of God speaker, which definitely is something I'm considering for RO3D. Okay, well, that's kind of the overview of the space. Um, here's the wire that I'm using. I use wire path, bulk wire for a lot of projects. This is 14.2 Plenium speaker wire. It's UL listed, ready to go into the wall. Got some fish rods over here. We're gonna run all the wires up. Gonna have to cut some holes to drill through the framing, but I'm gonna walk you guys through all of that. If you're building your dream home theater or a flex space like this, you're working with my consultants, keep in mind, we can provide everything from pre-construction brackets. If you are doing new construction to where you don't even have to cut the sheetrock, the guys can do it when they're building the home, um, as well as we provide the wire to run um, to all your different terminations, as well as system designs at absolutely no cost to you. All that we ask is that you buy your equipment from us. All right, guys. Well, that's kind of the overview. Let's get into the hard work. So what I'm doing right now is just the initial assessment of the space, trying to figure out which way all of the beams and studs are running, where they're at, and kind of create a game plan on where I'm going to run the wires to. So typically, your rafters are going to run like this. That's, you know, how they... Then they'll lay your sheetrock underneath it and then your plywood above it. Then you have your roof with insulation in between. So as you can see, I have a stud right here. And then the next stud is right there. So what I'm going to try to do for aesthetic purposes is line up my speakers with these can lights, which are slightly wider than the rear speakers, but that's gonna just give me better dispersion throughout the space. So I'm gonna put one under this can and one under that can out there, but it's pretty close to in line with the speaker holes that are already cut for the rear at most. We're only about one foot off. We're gonna go ahead and get that popped in. So as you guys can see here, this is a little tip for doing retro installations. A lot of the time what I'll do before I cut the full size hole is just cut a little test hole so that I can stick my hand up in there, feel around and make sure there's not something that my stud fighter didn't pick up. Gas lines, electrical lines that are stapled down, plumbing, uh, could be framing that the stud finder just didn't see. Sometimes there's weird stuff like there will be a stud just floating slightly above that they bolted in whenever they're building the house just to stand on. So a lot of different things that could be inside the wall. So cutting a small test hole doesn't hurt anything. And that just ensures that whenever you do go to cut the hole, you're in the clear. <laughs> So we got the first hole down. I'm gonna be lining up because of the way that the framing is and the fact that these tiny cans were so close to the framing. I don't, I can't really get the speaker in line with the can like I initially had planned to make it as aesthetically pleasing as possible. So what I'm gonna do is put the left at most front speaker at the same distance from the center of the screen as the right speaker. So. We got 59 inches from here to the fireplace, and then we have another six and a half inches from the edge of the fireplace to the edge of the hole. So in a perfect world, what I'd like to do is have the speaker, the edge of the speaker come out to, um, that would be 65 and a half inches. Yeah, it would be about right in here. 
So I'm gonna move the ladder over, do a little bit of testing, see where the studs are, and uh, come up with a game plan. A lot of this retro installation is just figuring it out on the fly because you don't know what's in the ceilings, which is why if you're doing more sophisticated projects like this where you need to run wiring, you could either put it underneath the carpet which is an easier option. You just pull back the tack strips or hire one of our preferred installers. We have them in 28 states now, guys, and these guys are five-star rated, and we uphold them to that rating to make sure that you get the best service. But continuing on with this project, let's get that Atmos front left in. Okay, so these pieces of tape mark out where the studs are. Now I need to get my tape measure and see where six and a half inches falls, which looks like it's gonna be really close to the studs. So my game plan is gonna to be to put the speaker on this side of the stud. Let's measure it out. All right, so that stud is actually 10 inches, but because my seating area is kind of offset to this side, that's not, really the worst thing. Um, plus we're going to be sitting at the bar area playing cards and stuff. So I'm going to put this left speaker 10 inches from that wall and then put it the exact same measurement from where the wall starts to go upward. That way they match. Perfect. All right, that turned out pretty well. We got our front Atmos, the top front Atmos, left and right, holes cut, everything's super nice. Now we're just going to put some up on our bins. Let's go. Check it out guys, I got all the fronts and mids in. It's coming along. All right, welcome back to your media family. Today we are on day two of wiring. Day one, I got all of the holes cut in the ceiling and now I need to cut even more holes in the ceiling and in the wall to fish all of the wiring from the rear of the room to the front of the room. Because this is kind of a side project, Typically with customers, we'll come in with a crew and just knock all this out consistently, all in you know a few days. But in this circumstance, it's gonna happen over time because I'm gonna do it all myself. So enough talking, let's get into the wiring. 